Megan Harbold, VP Strategy and Growth with Sky, and we are here in Las Vegas for Grocery Shop 2024. Hello and welcome to Retail Media Thursdays. I'm here with Ryan. Ryan, I want you to introduce yourself. Yeah, it's great to be with you, Megan. My name's Ryan and I get the privilege of leading strategy for the Sam's Club member access platform, which is our retail media network and colloquially known as MAP. MAP, love it. I'm um, Eric Heller, founder of Asymmetric Intelligence, but really the um, background for what I'm known for is that um, I started one of the first agencies for brands selling to her on Amazon called Marketplace Ignition and we um, became part of WPP in 2017. My name is Lori Shaw. I am with Bob's Red Mill. I've been at the company just about four years now based out of Portland, Oregon. Josh Kreitzer is founder and CEO of Channel Bakers. Just a guy. My name is Spencer Millerberg. I am the chief data nerd for Detail Page. My name is Chris Perry, and I was born in, I'm just kidding, I we won't go that far back. Um, I'm the chief learning officer and co-founder at a company called First Mover. With me, I have Angela Myers, senior vice president of retail media at the Goodway Group. Angela, thank you so much for joining us here today and spending thank some you. time away from this great conference. I'm Jack Lindbergh. I'm the head of product at Shallion. Um, for those of you not familiar with Shallion, we are a digital shelf and retail media insights platform, helping brands and their agencies uh, achieve growth on their retailer website. So we're here at Grocery Shop yeah. in Vegas. Um, what's maybe something interesting that you've learned so far? Yeah, I think that if I were to say two big themes that I'm seeing here, number one is that uh, people are very concerned about return on their uh, media dollars. Right. And how do you make those media dollars go further? The second one is uh, the ad uh, with AI coming in, the application of those AI yeah. uh, is really a, a key thing that uh, we're starting to see, is how do you not just have AI, uh, it's not just enough to like, hey, great, I have chat GPT, yeah. or I have some call to this that does this sort of thing, but it really has to be applicable. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to figure out how does it apply into my business in uh, a way that is gonna drive more sales. If I was to reflect back on 12 months ago, what I wish I would have known, um, something to be said for like the CPG vertical, everybody here is extremely smart. Um, which also lends itself the idea that you've got to really bring solid value with a solid technology partner um, and or really solid tactics that are making you very uniquely different in the value you add. Um, savvy people expect a lot. And that is one of my big key takeaways that I wish 12 months ago I had come to the show to really get a better understanding of the CPG crowd. What I didn't know, now to be fair, probably going back 24 months, I mean, because it's been developing over the last many, many months, almost there's an update all the time, yeah. was just how much work has been done by a lot of the retail media networks on identifying incrementality, right? And I think that's the, not just the, the, the general attribution model, but actually identifying the, key, the KPIs and then a methodology for how to calculate incrementality, not just from new to brand, and not just maybe even broad eye ROAS, if you will, yeah. but like, so, but ROAS, like incremental ROAS from a more trips or bigger baskets, or yes. had I not seen that ad, I would have de I would have declined off of your brand at this rate, but because I stayed on, I've repeated this many more times, you know, so yeah. it's, and, and that actually is starting to become quite possible with you know, I, I, when I immediately think of the Walmart Connects, the Kroger Precision Marketings, yeah. some of it's still manual, but we're starting to get to where we could actually take big, big platforms and they wouldn't be representative of everything in the market, but they give us pretty good case studies of when I do X, I got this type of incrementality, not just new to, new to brand is important, right. but new to brand is only one part of category management. There's a whole other buy rate part that we want to be able to calculate Absolutely. too. Absolutely. What I didn't expect would be the rate of proliferation of retail media networks. I think 12 months ago we were thinking, okay, retail media is gonna be a big thing, but we didn't really know how big. And now that we see retail media networks being spun up by people that aren't actually retailers even, um, and now there are hundreds of them, uh, the type of complexity that our brands and their agencies deal with has not sort of grown linearly, it's grown exponentially. And that, that makes our jobs as providers that much more challenging, but that much more valuable. Uh, so I wish that I knew how long 
things, well, how shortly it would be before things changed again. So, you yes. know, we, we plan annually. So we tend to, you know, find out what's happening, what retailers are doing and plan accordingly. But then by the time the year rolls around, everything has changed. Yeah. And so, you know, there was a point, it's almost like cable TV in a sense. <laughs> like there used to be, you know, like a few networks and then everyone had their own channel. And now it's kind of consolidating into networks. And so yeah. I kind of feel like that in the retail space, a lot of people are branching out. Whereas, you know, when I was here last year, everyone was kind of converging into a few different media networks. And so, um, yeah, basically just kind of knowing if I was able to see ahead what would be happening to be yeah. able to, you know, for us to plan and budget accordingly. Yes. It would be great. <laughs> yes, yes. It's You're not alone in that. I think the budgeting questions, the timing of it all, the real time nature of this space, it is so hard for a more traditional brick and mortar business mm -hmm. to like be able to very quickly figure that out. Mm -hmm. And again, there's still everyone's still trying to because it's going to be different tomorrow anyway. So yes. like. <laughs> I mean, if I look back over the past 12 months, I think the word that comes to mind is stakeholder. And you'll hear this a lot in our industry, right, where suppliers or advertisers talk about feeling like retail media networks are a tax on them. And there's this conversation about like, well, who is the stakeholder that the RMN is trying to serve? Is it the customer? Is it the advertiser? Is it the retailer? And depending on who you talk to, they may have a very different answer. What I wish I knew 12 months ago was that it's actually not picking one of those. That retail media networks have the responsibility to serve all three of those stakeholders across the customer for Sam's Club because we're a club membership model platform. We call them our members because they invest with us, so members. Mm -hmm. But we also have stakeholders that are our advertisers and our partners and our enterprise as a whole as we try to grow the retail business. So it shifted my thinking a bit when I consider as head of strategy product development or the types of ways that we're serving the various members that we're going after, that holistic stakeholder model is something I wish I had thought about more 12 months ago that I'm thinking a whole heck of a lot about now. Okay, so let's maybe think a little bit more future facing. 12 months from now, we're going to sit, we're going to have a beer. What are we talking about in this space? Yeah, so I think next year, um, and I'm already starting to see like evolution with more in-store programs, with more in-store offerings, so and like closed loop reporting and incremental studies. So I think it's going to be more how to tie all the dots together. Yeah. Um, we're starting to do that, and I think you know, free re retailers are embracing it, but I think that's going to really spread across the board and make our budget stretch farther and make our learnings more impactful. Yeah. So I think that's where we're going to be in about a year from now, just you know, more measurement in terms of across the board yeah. and having less fragmentation between like different departments. Less fragmentation between departments, between budgets, between channels. Oh my gosh. And yeah, data is the way to make that happen for sure. Mm -hmm. I am, again, very impressed at the level of um, technology providers that are leveraging AI for real. I mean, AI, again, is a buzzword that everybody likes to throw around and go, oh, we have AI, right? But more often than not, it's just very surface level. They just want to check a box about saying, oh, we do AI things, right? But I'd say if I came back here, when will I come back here next year? Um, I think there's going to be really strong platforms that are maybe startups now that they do have the right solution. Yeah. Uh, again, that solution of identifying people in store to serve them more personalized ads in store and in store experiences. So I would say I'm really excited about next year to see the real solutions behind generative AI and or AI for in store experiences. Yeah. Yeah. That is what I'm excited about coming back for next year. It's the, the one thing that I've been the most excited about here on day two. Day two is kind of like the AI day here. Yeah. And that's been the All one thing AI. like I've been going to every single session about AI for retail. So Amazon announces this AI enhanced dynamic search. Mm -hmm. I think what we're going to be talking about next year is do we actually have what it takes to make that possible, right? Brands right now, as we went through and take a look at yeah. the content that they have, plain and simple, they don't have the content. Amazon introduced a new key product features field in yeah. March of this year. 9%, uh, I was in a uh, conference with uh, 500 brands, 9% of those brands even had that field filled out. That's crazy. But you think AI, what is it doing? It's taking this massive, massive amount of information and it's consolidating it and pulling it down into like the key fewer bigger better pieces that's yeah. there and so Amazon's trying to get 
more information about your product. And so if you don't have the right information, they cannot create the content. Yeah. It's like legally not allowed. And so they only can reorder that content. That's what they do with that dynamic search is reorder. And so we're gonna be talking about, do we have the right Content. Fundamentals, really. Yeah. Just the fundamentals become so much more critical yep. and maybe a bigger foundation to what that foundation is. You know what I mean? I think a, I think a couple of things. For, for us as an agency, I think the consolidation that we'll see in terms of some of the mid and smaller size retail media networks that are coming together, whether they're in, in aggregate today via a partner or that partner has yet to figure it out, you're going to see, I think, more of that consolidation that makes it easier for brands to consider that that small and medium retail retailer, their customer base in that consideration set for how they're buying retail media. And as an agency, I think we're going to be really paramount to making sure that those connections can happen in a meaningful way where we can enable the brand to, to do exactly that in, in a simplified fashion. And we can help the retailer make sure that they're you know, partnering with the right partner and yes. They're set up for success in everything that they're putting forth with that partnership. I mean, I think we're going to have new problems that we don't even know about, course, right? When yeah. you think about the <laughs> proliferation of artificial intelligence or new types of targeting capabilities. But when I look to the next 12 months, if that was the previous 12 months, what I get really excited about is the in-store experience because RMNs have focused so heavily on building out their capabilities for on-site and even off-site, but the focus has been digital. A lot of conversation has gone on around, well, how do you then bridge that digital and physical divide into the store? And again, as a club warehouse model, we call it our club, so into the club. Right. And that's what I think we're gonna see emerge more and more over the next 12 months. But the challenge for RMNs is it's really darn hard to do measurement effectively in a store, in a club format. Yeah. Which is exciting for, again, for us because as a club membership model, we have 100% attributable first party deterministic data. So as our members go across, whether it's offsite, onsite, or in club, we can attribute the vast majority of those transactions across the whole stream. So I think you're going to see the whole industry focus more on engaging in that omni-channel way in the store, in the club. And at MAP, we're really excited because we think that's actually our differentiating value proposition to where we can serve like no one else can. Yeah. Let's start with where I think we'll be in a year that's not surprising. I think it's just more of the same, you know, um, Yesterday, the CEO for North America for PepsiCo was on the keynote stage saying, uh, you know, this retail media expansion, you've got to think there's an end somewhere. You know, there, how many retailers really need to be media, Yeah. really need to be their own media platform? And I, I don't think it's going anywhere. Like, why, yeah. why, wouldn't they keep, why wouldn't they keep verticalizing and making more money off the sale? I mean, this is just co-op. Right. This is MDF for now. I think the biggest thing will be about how our partners have been using generative AI. I think at the moment, what we've seen generally from folks are what I would describe as like toy products, mm -hmm. where they're using generative AI for an interesting use case, um, but maybe it's not something that's gonna scale to the enterprise level value that we need to create for, yeah. our, for our clients. Um, the way I think about it is like, generative AI is a new tool in your toolkit, um, it would be hard to, let's say, build a house without a saw, but you don't want to do every single task with a saw if that's generative AI. Yeah. Now, before I let you go, Lorraine, yeah. I have a few surprise questions for Hit you. Me with them. If your groceries could be delivered by any famous person, who would you choose and why? Oh, any famous person. Tough question. And you prepped me for this too, and I still don't know the answer. <laughs> Do they have to be alive or dead? No, anybody. Be any, anyone. Any famous person. Okay. Well, I'd have to say, number one, the grocery that I would want delivered is our Members Mark wine. As we're <laughs> drinking wine here, we have two great wines. One is our Russian River Pinot Noir, and the other is our Yontville Cabernet Sauvignon. So those would absolutely be in the list. Ryan Reynolds. He's funny. Love it. Absolutely. Ryan, he's super what? funny. Well, here's the thing. I'm I'm not someone who ever has my groceries delivered. I would yeah, want someone to come awesome. shop with me. <laughs> I'm going to say Walt Disney. Oh, yeah. First of all, how funny would that be if Walt Disney was delivering <laughs> groceries? I mean, he's built an empire and here he is giving yeah. me my almond milk. So I'm, I'm, I'm a singer and I 
thought maybe one day I would be a singer, but then e-commerce became a better bet for a career. <laughs> um, but I was pretty good at it. But I mean, I, I would honestly like, like Backstreet Boys. Honestly, I, I'm gonna go for All more. Five of them? Yeah, oh why not? Oh my gosh, um, yes. Or or I, I'll t I'll take In Sync as well. Either one. I'm kind of an old school guy. I love sports. So having a famous player come by and dropping off a bag of groceries would be pretty neat. And I'd have to say Steph Curry because I'm a huge oh, basketball fan. Nice. So I'd say Steph Curry for the win on that one. Great. That's a good one. So maybe someone like a celebrity chef, like good. Gordon yeah, Ramsay, and I'll right. say, hey, I'm in the grocery store at Fairway. What do I get? There you go. Get those Instacart DoorDash deliveries. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay, help me out. This is going to sound really ridiculous. But I love to see A.G. Leffley. I, he's always been like, he's a CEO, ex-CEO of Procter & Gamble. Always that thought that he's the most so amazing interesting. guy. <laughs> you can just imagine the, the wealth of knowledge he can impart as he hands over the bag It's so, so cool, right? <laughs> Here you go. This is the reason I came up with Tide. <laughs> yeah. You have to pick one. You can't I'm going to do Backstreet both. Boys. Okay. And I want them to do Shape of My Cart as a song. Oh That's what I want gosh. them to do. Oh my gosh. Hashtag Shape of My Cart. We're taking that. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, thank Chris. You so that much. was awesome. Thanks. Thank you.